region is benefiting from the the improvement in commodity prices in recent uh, recent months. International Monetary Fund explores new frontiers to harnessing global growth prospects as the 2018 spring meeting gets underway in Washington, D.C. Heads of state and government from the Commonwealth nations converge on London in a shared desire to bring security and prosperity to member nations. We have consistently reassured the public that for those who registered in 2017, their PBCs will be ready for collection. Seven new INEC resident electoral commissioners take out of office in Abuja. And task force, the air task force of Operation Lafayette Dole destroys Boko Haram vehicles at the Lake Chad region. Good evening and welcome to NTA Network News. I am Muhammad Kudu Abubakar. Reading with me tonight is Michael Olaleye in Lagos, Caleb Gochin in Jaws, and Funke Ibidamito in Ibado. As the Buhari administration moves to rebuild the economy and industrialize the country, how to maximize bilateral relations between Nigeria and the United Kingdom has again come under focus. At the period when Britain is at the verge of leaving the European Union, experts believe this is the time for the two nations to reset their engagements as they look to the future. Foreign Day correspondent Mike Makut Sarunbacham has this report. Relations between Nigeria and the United Kingdom have evolved over time with both nations today operating as partners in many fronts. For instance, the Nigeria-British Chamber of Commerce is over 40 years old, facilitating robust economic partnership. At the moment, trade between the two entities hovers around £3.8 billion per annum and is expected to rise steadily. Other areas of collaboration include security and intelligence sharing, where the two countries have mutually worked together to confront terrorism and insurgency. As President Muhammad Buhari's recent meeting with British Prime Minister Theresa May shows, there is determination on both sides to ensure that the desired results are obtained. Political analyst Professor Chudi Uazurike speaks. The United Kingdom is uh, perhaps our most important and most reliable trading partner over the years. Uh, as a former colonial uh, power, uh, we have more than a passing tie. But in the modern world, in this age of globalization, what really counts is economic uh, and other threat ties, as well as mutual co-prosperity. Uh, and apart from that, perhaps a number of cultural ties, a number of literary ties, and so on. So I'll say it's cordial. He also says that relations between the two nations should also be strengthened in the area of fighting corruption, particularly in repatriating Nigeria's looted assets allegedly stashed in the United Kingdom. In Abuja, Makut Simon Machan, NTA News. I'm now being joined by Ambassador Akin Oyateru, a former Nigerian ambassador to the Kenya with concurrent accreditation to the CCLs. He, is also, he also served for four years as head of political desk at the Nigeria High Commission in the United Kingdom. Welcome, Ambassador Oyateru, to NTA Network News Studio. Thank you, Mr. Bubakar. Arising from the reported meeting between uh, President Muhammad Buhari and Prime Minister Theresa May on Monday in London, what will you say is, is your assessment of Nigeria-UK relations? What it, is it and what should it be? Well, uh, the Nigeria-UK relation has been long-standing, uh, given uh, the historical links and our affinity, and the relations continue to be friendly and close. But there is need to continue to sustain it and to strengthen it. So I would say right now the relationship, they're very good. And uh, I think the meeting between President uh, Buhari and uh, Prime Minister May went uh, very well. The United Kingdom is preparing to exit the European Union. And uh, what will you, should you, the focus now be between relations between Nigeria and the UK as the UK lifts the European Union? I think, uh, you know, when you have uh, issues, you can actually look at them from two sides. Either you see it as a, as a problem and then uh, prepare to tackle it, mm -hmm. or you see it as an opportunity and embrace it. Uh, Britain has had uh, vast trading 
relations with many countries in the world before it entered uh, the European Union, which was the EEC then. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has vast experience uh, in trading with nations. Certain rules of the, EEC, of the Union has actually shackled it from having independent or special relations, uh, uh, particularly preferential trade relations with countries. So I think uh, going forward, uh, the United Kingdom will be looking at seizing this opportunity and optimizing its strength uh, with nations. We can look at, uh, with Nigeria, probably we are going to resuscitate our joint bilateral commission and uh, see how we can deepen and enlarge uh, uh, economic uh, activities. So that means you are envisaging the UK having a special economic and other relations with the Nigeria? Oh, yes. Uh, I, I think uh, going forward, that would be very possible. Well, Nigeria, of course, is fighting insurgency and uh, fighting corruption as well. What support or cooperation or collaboration do you think the UK can give Nigeria in this regard? The UK has given these commitments over time and uh, stated this publicly many times, that uh, they were uh, prepared, they stand ready to assist Nigeria, and they've been given some form of assistance in uh, fighting uh, uh, international uh, terrorism in the area of training capacity building for armed forces and in some cases supply of equipment and uh, defense education in fighting corruption they've uh, we've had some sort of collaboration with them uh, in the areas of uh, repatriating I mean um, uh, stolen funds and uh, area of uh, tackling money in laundry and you see the United Kingdom itself continues to improve his own, I mean, um, corruption, a war against corruption. You have the, what you call the uh, financial, I mean, special uh, office, the FSO. They continue to improve their tactics and uh, their methods. And then you have, they're opening a new register, uh, which they call, I mean, for foreign um, companies that own property in the UK. This mm -hmm. is to break uh, the secret link between uh, uh, those companies and uh, money laundry. And they're even thinking of uh, appointing uh, a sort of uh, corruption czar for the first time who will be visible and uh, probably more effective. And of course, as you know, there's been a lot of collaboration between our EFCC and uh, the uh, FSO in the areas of capacity building, exchanging of ideas, training, and of course, equipment and uh, new methods of detection. So in a nutshell, you appear to be positive that relations will be stronger in all ramifications? I think it will be stronger, particularly in those three areas of uh, the economy, security, and the war against corruption. Uh, what uh, the challenge for Nigeria is to ensure that we have uh, short to medium term plans and we're ready to engage the United Kingdom once it exits the European Union. Ambassador Akin Oyatero, thank you so much for your thoughts. We've been speaking with former Nigeria's ambassador to the Kenya with concurrent accreditation to the Sea Charles, Ambassador Akin Oyetaro. Still on the international scene, prosperity, security, fairness, and sustainability are the pivot around which the 2018 Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting, Chogum, revolves. With the world leaders already gathered in the United Kingdom for the event, Nancy Goody Aninhu examines the 2018 Chogum in London. This community of 53 nations working together to promote prosperity, democracy, and peace constitutes the Commonwealth whose first meeting held in 1971. Chogum 2018 with the theme, Towards a Common Future, is the current and 25th meeting originally scheduled for 2017 in Vanuatu, but was moved to the UK due to infrastructure damage caused by Cyclone Pam to Vanuatu. The Buckingham Palace, St. James Palace, Windsor Castle are the venues. To take center stage are the Commonwealth's responsiveness to global challenges in the 21st century, especially as they concern the youth and the urgent need to reduce vulnerability and increase resilience in the light of impacts of climate change, which the body envisages could push additional 100 million people into poverty come 2030. 
already. Host British Prime Minister Theresa May has held talks with President Muhammadu Buhari ahead of the meeting. Starting with Business Forum, followed by People's Forum, Women's Forum, and lastly, Youth Forum, the 2018 Commonwealth Heads of Government Meeting, Chogum, which began on Monday 16th, ends Friday the 20th of April. And the next summit is due in 2020. Nancy Godiangunihu, NTA News. In the meantime, the global economy has continued to show broad-based, has continued to show broad-based momentum despite uncertainties. Lea Katun Babatunde reports that the International Monetary Fund is maintaining sound economic policies and multilateral cooperation as key to harnessing prospects for global growth. Lear reports from the IMF headquarters in Washington, where the 2018 spring meeting is underway. This year, the International Monetary Fund IMF projected a substantial growth rate of 3.9% for this year and next. The global lender, however, identified some risk to these prospects, aging population in advanced economies, varied pictures in emerging and developing economies, and revenue uncertainty in commodity exporting nations. For sub-Saharan Africa, more needs to be done to sustain strides recorded so far. The region is benefiting from the, the improvement in commodity prices in recent, uh, recent months, um, the still accommodative financial conditions, and in, in many cases, countries are putting in place fiscal adjustment plans which will uh, strengthen buffers and, and leave them better equipped to deal with the, the next downturn that comes their way. Trade restrictions and counter restrictions the IMF says threatens to undermine confidence and real global growth prematurely. Um, we've certainly seen uh, reactions in asset markets, uh, the exchange rate, the stock markets in, in Russia. Um, should the sanctions have a uh, noticeable impact on, on Russian growth, that would obviously spill over to Russian trading partners, particularly the uh, CIS countries. But as I said, it's too early to really evaluate the effects. On the whole, the IMF says individual nations must do more to promote stronger, more sustainable and inclusive growth. I'm Lea Katung Baba Tunde, NTA News. And while the federal government says it is making effort to improve economic recovery and growth plan, ERGP, through the capital market, as the Nigerian Stock Exchange post gains. Let's join Musa Abubakar for more on business news. Hello and welcome to business news segment. Dipping in the capital market for optimal performance towards increasing revenues and private sector participation in the market has been pursued to sustain and grow the economy. The Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Okechuku Enalema, told a capital market upstream forum in Lagos. That's the Nigerian market capitalization at 15 trillion naira was about 41 billion dollars is less than 10 percent of the nation's GDP. This, he noted, needs to be improved upon through the involvement of stakeholders and other sources for economic growth and development. Innovation and capital will help to supplement the financing available from government and other sources for, econo for our economic development. What we should be doing is organizing ourselves into a group where we can encourage entrepreneurship. And still from the equities market of the Nigerian Stock Exchange Tuesday, the 7th of April 2018, closed in positive territory, reversing the negative trend on the first trading day of the week on Monday. The all share index appreciated marginally by 0.63%, with all share index at 40,788.68 basis points, while market capitalization increased to 14.7 trillion naira. 1.6 million equities valued at 10.9 billion naira were traded in 4,729 deals. The financial institutions were the most traded stocks, with Unity Bank, Owando, Sky Bank all gaining, while the loser stable, Hard C and I Leeson, Fitzen and AG Leventis. The stock market report concludes business news. I am Musa Abubakar. 
Thank you, Musa. We now take a short break. More stories when we return. This is the NTA Network News. Thank you for remaining there. Finding lasting solutions to the nefarious activities of armed bandits in various states, which led to loss of lives and property, has once again dominated proceedings on the floor of the Senate. Deliberations were prompted by a point of order raised by Senator representing Nasarawa South, Suleiman Adokwe, on the recent spate of killings. National Assembly correspondent Dennis Adeguloe reports. As alluded to by the Deputy Senate President, E.K. Ekwiramadu, who presided over the sitting, the Senate will never grow tired of discussing the issue of insecurity in the country until the perpetrators of those acts of destruction of lives and property are brought to book. Throughout the weekend and up to the moment of speaking, have unleashed terrorist mayhem across the southern senatorial district of Nasarawa State. If we need international support, we should say so on time. My heart bleeds, particularly where we find ourselves as a nation. To continue to give them the flan headsman issues, I don't think it is helpful and it will not take anybody anywhere because it's not true. Lamentation is enough. Let's find a solution. And it's not the job of one person. It's the job of all of us. I think we should begin to preach a way of peace to our people. But I think time has come for us to seek help from other countries, as some people have suggested here. We should not be ashamed to ask for help. While appreciating the efforts of government, the legislators also urged the relevant authorities to beef up operations, especially in those volatile areas. Meanwhile, the Senate Committee on Appropriations is to invite the Ministers of Defense and Finance, as well as the CBN Governor, over an alleged $462 million withdrawal from the Consolidated Revenue Fund for the purchase of a helicopter without Senate approval. Confirmed were President Mohamedou Buhari's nominations for Executive Secretary of the National Human Rights Rights Commission and the chairman of the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission. Meanwhile, two proposed bills for the establishment of the FCT Primary Healthcare Board and the FCT Health Insurance Scheme have been presented by the Federal Capital Territory Administration to Senator Philip Aduda, representing the FCT. This is one of the bills that we will so we'll pass quickly so that the people of the FCT and uh, indeed our corporate and all the people president can have uh, very good priority health care. From the National Assembly, Dennis at Dignoy, NTA News. Still at the legislature, Tuesday at the House of Representatives plenary was dedicated in marking the four year anniversary of the abduction of 219 school girls from Chibok in Bono State, following a motion of urgent public importance by the member representing Chibok, Asabe Velita Bashir. The legislators called on authorities to intensify efforts towards rescuing the remaining abducted girls. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Nko reports. The member who moved the motion, Representative Asabe Veleta Bashir, while ruling out the names of all the remaining Chibok girls, urged government to conclude negotiations and rescue the remaining girls who are still in captivity. This house commends the urgency with which the federal government handled negotiation and the release of the adopted Dapchi girls. This house is concerned about the fate of the remaining adopted Chibo girls. They were captured at a time that was different from Buhari's administration. But so far, through Buhari administration, we have succeeded in securing over 100 of them back to their families. We pray that those girls, particularly those of them that are still alive, we pray that they will return to us safely. Government should intensify action so that Leah Shaributu should also be released to join her family. Concern, this goes to all of us as a government, judiciary, legislature, and the executive. The issue of electricity tariff was also considered. This followed a bill that seeks to criminalize estimated billing by electricity distribution companies. The bill sponsored by the House leader, Femi Bajabia Miller, has been passed through second reading. To bring to a screeching halt, Mr. Speaker, the biggest economic ripoff. This is corruption in another form. If you criminalize this conduct, there is no way you can get a conviction against a disco that does not supply meters because they do not manufacture them. 
There are so many people who are also getting charged without consumption. Members resolved to investigate cases of rejection of core members by organization for their one-year compulsory national service. This followed a motion moved by Representative Bolaji Ayinla from Lagos State. Two members from Anambra State, Anayo Nebe and Ben Wankwa, defected from the People's Democratic Party, PDP, to the All Progressives Grand Alliance, APGA, citing division in PDP as reason for the defection from the National Assembly, Ignatius Nkwo, NTA News. Meanwhile, the Air Task Force of Operation Lafia Doli has successfully destroyed some Boko Haram terrorists at a location about 12 kilometers east of Arege in the Lecture region. A statement by the Director of Public Relations and Information of the Nigerian Air Force, Air Vice Marshal Olato Kumbo Adesoya, indicates that enough intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance aircraft had discovered Boko Haram terrorist activities with some vehicles mounted with guns in the location. Accordingly, a NAV MI-35M helicopter jet gunship was detailed to conduct air interdiction strikes to take out the targets. Battle damage assessment reveals that at the end of the air interdiction strikes, activities of the Boko Haram terrorists were completely paralyzed. The Nigerian Air Force says it will continue to provide adequate air support through the Air Task Force of Operation Lafia Dole by conducting a range of air operations to create necessary environment for ground operations to continue. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has reassured that all eligible Nigerians, Nigerian voters that registered will get their permanent voter registration cards before the 2019 general elections. INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud, excuse me, INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu stated this while swearing in seven new resident electoral commissioners. Political correspondent Abdullah Hagarab bin Nkudu reports. The seven new resident electoral commissioners sworn in are representing Borno, Ikiti, Kwara, Nasrawa, Rivers, Gwambi, and Edo states. Two are former resident electoral commissioners reappointed, one former state electoral chairman, while the rest are from the academia and public service, appointed by President Muhammad Buhari and approved by the National Assembly. The INEC chairman reminded them of their important assignment ahead, including four by-elections in Bauchi, Gazna, Taraba, and Kogi, the two governorship elections in Ikiti and Oshun, and the 2019 general elections. Of utmost importance to INEC is the continuous voters' registration. We have consistently reassured the public that for those who registered in 2017, their PVCs will be ready for collection in the first week of May. 2018, that is in the next few weeks. Those who registered in the first quarter of this year, January to March 2018, as well as those who are registering right now in the second quarter of this year, will collect their cards thereafter. And for those who registered in Ekita and Oshun states in 2017 and 2018, priority attention is being given to the production of their PVCs. There are less than 305 days to the 2019 general elections. In Abuja, Abdullahi Garba Purnokudu, NTA News. The Senate's 90 legislative days suspension to Senator Ovie Omo Agege has continued to generate reactions, particularly from members of the All Progressives Congress. At the National Secretariat of the party in Abuja, elders and leaders of the APC from Delta State described the suspension as unconstitutional and unacceptable. Salih Abdullahi reports. It is almost a week now since the suspension of Senator Ovia Omoagege, the only APC senator representing Delta Central Senatorial District in the 8th Senate. Comments credited to the senator saying that the amendment of the Electoral Act altering the 2019 election sequence by the National Assembly was targeted at President Muhammad Buhari and taking the National Assembly to court upon suspension of parliamentary support groups prompted the suspension. Although he apologized, as a matter of courtesy, Senator Obiyama Gege clearly spoke within the ambit of Section 39 Sub 1 of the Constitution, which grants every person, every person, freedom of expression. Stakeholders of the All Progressives Congress from Delta State took their protest 
to the National Secretariat saying the suspension of Senator Ovia Omoagege is depriving the people of Delta Central Senatorial District their constitutional right of representation. The group calls for a more cordial relationship among the key organs of government in the interest of the nation and sustenance of true values of democracy in Abuja, Salihu Abdullahi. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has recovered 57 million Naira ecological funds allegedly to have been laundered in Niger State. Mukhtar Abubakar Rowo reports that the EFCC's counsel disclosed these in an interview at the Federal High Court, MENA, where former governor of Niger State, Dr. Muazu Babangida Aliu, and Umar Mohamed Nasku are standing trial in respect of the sums of money. The EFCC Council hinted that the PDP gubernatorial candidate in the 2015 general elections, Umar Mohammed Nasco, refunded 50 million naira. Ibrahim Nasco refunded 3 million naira. Others include Saidu Idris Indako, who refunded 2 million naira, while 1 million naira each recovered from Umar Mohammed Bawa and one Musi Jibrin. The only person who has not refunded any money yet is the uh, first defender, that is uh, the governor himself, the, -gov the former governor. But the second defender, who is the immediate past PDP governor, super aspirant, has refunded. Counsel to Umar Mohammed Nasco, however, argued that his client did not refund any money to the EFCC. My client didn't refund any money. The money is part of the about 2 billion naira alleged to have been laundered by Dr. Mazuba Mangida Aliyu and Umar Muhammad Nasco from the Federal High Court, Mina Mukhtar Abu Bakr, NTA News. Prosecuting authorities across the country have been told to review the case files of matters that have been pending before courts for years or risk having them discharged for lack of prosecution. Chairman of the Presidential Committee on Decongestion of Prisons, Justice Ishak Bello, made the call when he visited the Inspector General of Police at the police headquarters in Abuja. Judiciary correspondent Femi Okewo reports. Since its inauguration last year, the Presidential Committee on Decongestion of Prisons has so far visited six states, but has gathered more than enough to see a picture of the trend that brought about the heavy backlog of awaiting trials in the nation's criminal justice system. The experience is that there are hundreds of cases that have not for even one day stepped into the courts, ranging from four to five and even 14 years. Since in all these instances the finding is that there are no prosecutions, Justice Ishak Bello and his team did not have to wait to write their final report to tackle the problems from the source. The question the public keeps on asking is, is there any reason for having these people in prison at all? Because if there is any cogent reason, why, why stay in for long without being placed in on proper trial. The Inspector General of Police instantly directed all state's commissioners of police to work with their state's attorneys general to sieve out such cases. You know, the synergy between the jury and police has to be a continuous exercise. Of course, I appreciate some of the challenges you see we are facing. And I believe possibly with the setting up of this committee, it can lessen the challenge. It is expected that the duties of the Presidential Committee on the Congestion of Prisons will begin to have a success of its assignment. In Abuja, Femi Okeowu, NTA News. Well, I join Michael in our Lagos Network Center for more reports on NTA Network News. Hello, Michael. Thank you, Kudu, and a warm welcome to Lagos. The federal government says it will continue to support young innovators and entrepreneurs in the drive to boost the nation's technology. Vice President Professor Yemi Oshimbajo said this while visiting some technology and innovation companies run by young Nigerians in Lagos. Tunde Saiki reports that the vice president was accompanied by the Minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Ogunaya Ono and the Director General of the Information Technology Development Agency, NIGDA, Professor Isa Ali Ibrahim. Science, innovation, and technology have been identified as a means through which the nation's economy and business development can be achieved. 
To realize this salient economic and technology drive, experts say individuals engaged in the sector needs to be supported and encouraged. This informed the Vice President's visit to some of such companies and centers owned and run by young men and women. Professor Oshibajo says the visit has given him more insight into how enterprising and innovative young Nigerians have become. Already, uh, as we always say, the future is here. You know, and I have seen for myself um, the sheer creativity from practically every type of enterprise that has been disrupted by the technologies that you see. Professor Shibajo added that this present administration is ready to support and even collaborate with anyone involved in such innovative ventures, especially when it is geared towards reducing unemployment. What we really need to do is to partner. What we really need to do is to work hand in hand with them so that we help in whatever ways or whatever difficulties there are. In some cases, it might be credit. In some cases, it might just be in creating the right policy and ensuring the right policy. Some young entrepreneurs describe the visit as a welcome development, as it shows that government is really keen on encouraging young investors. For us in technology, uh, especially the new generation of technology people, this is uh, some sort of validation in a way, because part of what we've been building um, is not just companies or businesses that can make money for the founders, but companies that can change Nigeria for good. Some of the facilities visited by the vice president and his entourage include ICT centers, co-creation hub Yaba and workstation in Victoria Island, as well as African Sinters Foundry in Lekki. In Lagos, Tunde Saiki, NTA News. Airports in Africa needs to engage the next generation of technology for them to be efficient and viable. This was the opinion of aviation experts who discussed technology to support business transformation on the second day of the Airports Council International African Conference holding in Lagos. Paulo Mukago reports. Technology is changing the way business is conducted at airports across the world, and experts say it is time airports in the continent catch up with global trends as their aging platforms are bad for business. On the second day of the Airports Council International Conference, they discuss how technology can support the transformation of business at the airports. Their primary emphasis was on automating processes to optimize passenger flow, improve efficiency, and create sources of revenue. We need to transform our airport to a shopping mall, a place where you are happy to travel and to spend time there. How technology will help? Technology will allow for example, by implementing this flow analysis. If you deploy self-service checking kiosk to be in a position to check your passenger at the airport, a number of uh, airports in Africa do not have this technology yet. And whenever we deploy one project, I had uh, the example last year in Casablanca uh, with Royal Air Maroc, the adoption is overnight. Technology will help us to bring back pleasure to find the time to do what we like, to live experience, to work, to eat, to shop. The panelists agreed that technology will reduce delays and enhance security. Help us in countries such as Ghana and Senegal are already adopting new technologies. In Lagos, Paul Omukagu, NTA News. You are still watching NTA Network News. More reports are aired after this timeout. Please stay tuned. <laughs> Thank you for remaining with NTA Network News. Aliko Dangote has once again been recognized for his outstanding contribution to development of the education sector in Nigeria. Ahmadu Bello University Alumni Association is the latest group to confer honors on the industrialists at the Gala Night in Abuja. Musa Abubakar now reports. <laughs> This was the rhythm that set the stage for an eventful evening that brought together people who share one thing in common, being alumni of prestigious Ahmadabella University, Zaria. The dinner and award night is to honor alumni of the institution and others who made significant contribution to the socio-economic development of the country. The mentioning of Ali Kwadangwete, who was represented by Ahmed Mansur, was no surprise to many, knowing the feat the richest man in Africa has attained, not only in the country, but in the continent in general. We 
fulfilled because uh, clearly this is a recognition of the contribution that the Dangote Group and particularly the Dangote Foundation has made to the Amadebello University. And I think this only gives us uh, greater motivation to try and do more. And uh, I am sure that the President will be delighted to receive this award and he will certainly be encouraged and continue to support our universities and particularly our education institutions. Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Governors of Nasarawa, Gumbi and Kebi were among recipients of the Prime University Alumni Awards. In Abuja, Musa Abubakar, NT News. Nigeria and India are set to enhance their cultural ties as both countries work towards reviving the Memorandum of Understanding on Culture and rolling out programs that will promote it. This was made known when the Indian High Commissioner to Nigeria, Nagabushna Reddy, received the Director General of the National Council for Arts and Culture, Otumba Olusegun Ranshawe, in Abuja. Wain Kaluoka reports. About 60 years of bilateral relations between India and Nigeria have considerably expanded with both countries building strategic and commercial ties. With this added development, the excited Indian High Commissioner to Nigeria was eager to take the Director General of the National Council for Arts and Culture, Otumbo Lushegu Roshewe, round the mosaic artwork. A panoramic ceramic wall that captures the 70 years of Indians' independence, showcasing different stages. Both countries with rich, diverse cultural heritage spreading through ethnic, religion and other aspects are exploring ways of collaborating. We are launching a new brand event every year, uh, starting from 5th of May, uh, wherein uh, we are titling this as Namaste Nigeria, which means greetings to Nigeria. So showcasing of the dances, costumes and music. This will be a new vista, opening windows to other countries to come and collaborate on cultural strengths of the region and of course of the world. The artwork, which is expected to last for about 30 years, is made with ties from the royal ceramics manufactured by the West African Ceramics Limited. Uyinaya Kalo Oka, NT News. Caleb in our Just Network studio has the next set of stories. Hello, Caleb. Welcome to Jaws. Plateau State Governor Simon Lalong has been described as a shining example in leadership owing to his prompt and up-to-date payment of salaries of workers. President of the Nigerian Labour Congress, Comrade Ayuba Waba, said this when he led members of the organized level, both at the national and state levels, on a court call on the governor. Paul Dama reports. The NLC president, Mr. Ayuba Waba, says the Plateau State, when compared to other states, has taken the lead in payment of salaries, pensions, and other liabilities. The labor leader says leadership is about the people and strict adherence to democratic processes and commended Governor Lalong for the judicious use of the bailout fund, pari club refund, and budgetary allocations to offset salary areas inherited from the previous administration. Even within the period that the workers were on strike, where the wrong rule of no work, no pay was applied, you came back and said, withdraw the case from court and you have started paying them. Governor Simon Lalong on his part expressed appreciation to the NLC president for their intervention when there were labor disputes in the state, noting that government has always carried the state chapter of the NLC along. He says payment of salaries is not only an obligation, but a moral responsibility of government, hence his concern for the welfare of workers. Uh, part of uh, the things we are doing for the workers, and I've made the approval already, is to acquire land for them to build their uh, housing estate. He commended the state chapter of the NLC under the leadership of Mr. Jibrin Banchir for being partners in progress. In Jos, Paul Dama, NTA News. Beneficiaries of N Power Program in Bauchi State have been urged to make good use of the opportunity towards improving their socioeconomic well being. It was at the opening of a two day training organized by the National Social Investment Office for the beneficiaries in six core trade areas. Muazu Hassan reports. 
program provision of life skills and attitude reorientation training service for empower built beneficiaries is designed to build the capacity of participants for better service delivery. Mr. Sunday Asuru, who is the lead consultant for the training, said the six core trade areas are electrical installation, plumbing, and pipe fitting. Others include carpentry, welding, and fabrication, as well as painting and decoration. The federal government in honest realization of the crucial need to effectively reposition the youth for a sustainable growth and development of the economy is not in any way relenting in its effort towards the overall success of this project. Dr. Ahmad Yero of Abu Bakr Tatari Ali Polytechnic Belti said the program is meant to reduce unemployment among youth and charge participants to make good use of the opportunity to become self-reliant. Some of the participants bear their minds on the workshop. Before this program, we are doing nothing, but now we are falling down. In Bauchi, Mwaz Hassan, NTA News. And that's all from here in Jaws, Funke in Ibadan. Has more stories. Thank you. Thank you, Caleb. Good evening and welcome to Ibadan. More news from the southwest. Oyo State House of Assembly has appealed to government to provide medical reports at no cost to children victims of rape or defilement in government hospitals in the state. Kami Akiwande has the report. Olawu Oladeji, representing Ogbomotion North State constituency, moved a motion on the need to stop requests for payment of 5,000 era from children victims of rape or defilement to obtain medical reports from government hospitals in Oyo State. The House observed with concern the alarming rate of reported cases of rape, especially involving minors, and the experience of having to pay the sum of 5,000 naira for medical reports. The lawmakers noted that many of the victims are indigent and so appealed to government to provide such medical investigation free of charge to minor rape victims to reduce their trauma. They've not been able to prosecute the perpetrators of the acts. So we are now appealing to the state government to please exempt the gay child from the payment of this 5,000 naira. The House resolved that a joint committee of health and women affairs should work with the state minister of health to ensure such medical reports are obtained free and put up jingles to sensitize the public in Ibadan. Kemi Akiwande, NTA News. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, says all is set for the review of voters register in the state ahead of the September 2018 governorship election in Oshun State. Chairman of the commission, Mahmoud Yakubu, stated this in a message to INEC Stakeholders Forum in Oshubu. Tokwe Alabi has more. INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, represented by the National Commissioner in Charge of Oshu or your iniquity states, Solomon Shoyebi said the Electoral Act 2010 as amended empowered the Commission to carry out continuous voter register. He said based on the 2015 exercise, Oshu State has a total of 1,407,235 registered voters, but so far about 994,000 have collected their permanent voter card. The political class will also come in to mobilize these people, encourage them to turn out for this assignment, ensure that we do what we are supposed to do, swimming in accordance with the rules. The commission, however, warned people against multiple registration and urged those that had registered to collect their permanent voter card as the exercise would address registration, replacement, collection, and transfer of voters' card. In Oshobo, Tokwe Alabi, NTA News. And that's it from Ibadan. It's back to Kudu Abubakar in Abuja for the rest of Network News. Okay, a peep into the world of sports after this timeout. Don't go away.
in sports. Acquire United enters for preparations ahead of their second leg clash with Al Hilal of Sudan in the CAF Confederation Cup in Uyo midweek. Listen more stories on the sports update with Kenneth Nemagodiki.